Okay, next up is bones. Bones are very exciting. We can achieve some very cool animation and uh, most importantly do some very cool animation in a very configurable and easy way if we use bones properly. So to begin, I'm going to hide all of these shapes because we won't be needing them for now. This will just be a demonstration and then go to create tools and select bone or we can hit B for bone. And then if we click on the stage, you can see that we add this root bone and that the root bone is highlighted. So every time I click, you can see that a bone gets added to the highlighted joint. Now the root bone is an important concept. If we hit T for translate, and select the root bone, you can see that the root bone has a position, scale, rotation. So if we move this root bone, all of the bones move in conjunc conjunction with the root bone, just as you would expect with a nor normal parent-child relationship. However, if we go to one of the joints, you can see that the joint has a position. However, if we move the, the joint, it doesn't move the root bone, it just moves all of its child and bones and child joints. The root bone is consistent. So if you create a skeleton or something like that, then the movement would need to be um, happening from the root bone. If there's like a forward or up motion or something like that. While for the other bones, you, you can only control the length and you can only control the rotation. In addition to this, bones can have like a variety of different constraints that can be added to it to achieve some very cool animations and to ensure that your animations follow certain principles or um, go in an unnatural state by rotating too much or by um, jumping too fast in its length or something like that. So let's delete this and hit B for bone and then quickly create like a skeleton. So we'll continue to add this, this will be the head. So let's say we want to go and add something to the root bone again, we will highlight the root bone by selecting it. And then here we can maybe do the hips. I made a mistake. Let's select this joint and then go down with the leg. I keep making mistakes, mistakes, select the joint, go down and then select the root bone again and then go to the right. And here we have a leg and let's say this is the shoulder and then go out very, very crude skeleton and there we go, here we have a skeleton. If we want to actually animate this, we would, let's say we want this animation to jump, as an example, let's go at the start, select this, uh, keyframe the translation by pressing, pressing Shift T, and then go up a bit, and then jump up, and then jump down, or let it go down again. There we have a very bad animation. Now the idea would be that as this jumps, you would rotate the bones. So for example, maybe at this point, the bone will slightly rotate to this side. Maybe this bone will go rotate this way. That's the point. So you can configure your bones to do something in, in, in that regard where it you manually set where the bones should be at each um, different keyframe, or you can make use of something like constraints. So you can basically also give points where the bones tend to go to. That is a bit more advanced and we will cover that a bit later and, and show some simple examples of how we can use constraints. But for now, the most important thing to know is that you use bones to basically configure your animations and then you assign vector shapes to these bones. So let's get the kid, the kid hero. And then we select the head shape. And what I will do is I will drag the head shape underneath the head bone. And now if I select the head bone and press rotate, you can see that the kid's head rotates along with that. So once we animate the bones, the kid will go with it. And then we will be delving deeper on how we can actually modify the head in proportion to the movement of the bones that modify. That will be a later video. Um, I also mentioned in the previous video that we will talk about freezing. So let's say I'm at the bone, I can say freeze images. And if I rotate, now the bone now the bone no longer rotates the head. So let's say we select the bone and say freeze joints and then select this shape and hit T for transform and drag it out or hit this one T for transform, drag it out. You can see that the joints remain consistent. If we actually take 
freeze joints off and say none and hit this T for translate, then you can see the joints move in conjunction, conjunction with the joints that um, are assigned to the parent and child relationship. That is what you need to know for now. Um, this will hopefully become clearer as we start animating our cape with bones. So we will be animating the cape in the wind using bones.